vigils. Um, when I first showed up in Wenatchee, a man who worked at a computer place hooked up my computer to his computer at his house. Later found out that he worked with law enforcement. And I just had a definite feeling that he had connected something to my computer so that it would be under surveillance at any time. And I will have to give out his name when I look at the computer name again and remember. And so I was looking up, trying to find out who was connected to who on different things. I was looking up the office of the, inter of the Inspector General. I was trying to get my FOIA. I was trying to resolve things with the Portland PD and the refusal to allow me to write my own statement about uh, rape. And I started writing to a human rights organization because my rights were being ruined. I had gone to Washington State after being unsafe in Oregon. And now my son was being affected and our rights were not being respected or honored. So I started to contact a human rights organization. And then at the same time, I started kind of seeing that there were some connections with even Krista and people she knew, and people from that area, and a few people from California, like even celebrities. Which I thought was really weird. But then I started having people driving helicopters over my house with my son very low to the ground. Just doing weird things. And... I realized that this one person that Krista knew, Bo Blixith, he probably that he, he told me he knew Paris Hilton. He lived next to her. He was her neighbor growing up, and his mother was French, another French person. Which you know, I don't have anything against the French, like who are good French people, but there were a couple of interesting connections where maybe people are connected in a certain way that. Um, a little different. I, he wanted to go out with me too after I had a glass of wine. And I said he wanted to go to a hotel or do something and I said no. But in general he didn't. He, I think he later wanted to do something with me. Maybe he didn't want to go to a hotel right then and there. Possibly he did. I can't remember. I'd have to think about it. And I said no and then he later wanted to have a fling with me and I said no. I said not, I'm not going out with you unless you break up with your girlfriend. And then when they were separated, he wanted to go out with me, and I still said no, because I said, well, that's not broken up completely. But, I mean, maybe Krista's connected to, in some way, to Paris Hilton. I mean, I didn't have anything against her. All, all I knew is that there were some people who, who were connected in ways that I didn't expect. And I guess when it comes to money and power, and then the government, it really can, if you, somebody doesn't like you for some reason, they can work against you in a major way. So then I was um, when the police refused to take this report and protect me and my son. I started getting assaulted in a different way at my house. And it was like a sudden very strong um, feeling of it was almost the same thing that they did to me and my son but it was a little different and it affected only my head and it caused my head to the muscle in my head or something to contract really strongly and then all of a sudden it expanded and you could feel it all the way through your entire head you could feel your head expanding it was the weirdest feeling and when this first thing hit um, I almost blacked out every single time and then the immediate response was that I had to crouch down. I was in instantly ill and I had to crouch down and almost crawl to the bathroom and then and I had then explosive diarrhea. And um, it wasn't a seizure. It wasn't epilepsy. And Almost every time it happened when I was right next to, on, or near my computer at the time. For whatever reason, it never happened anywhere else. And I 
it happened all the time. I was so sick and then all of a sudden it was happening to my son. My son was having weird explosive diarrhea. I kind of wondered what was if he was also had something that was being done to him. The cat could no longer the cat was potty trained and litter box trained. And always used the litter box regularly and and normally. And all of a sudden the cat had to have been affected too because the cat was no longer able to make it to the litter box. The cat would suddenly have this explosive diarrhea on right on the carpet. And I would have to clean it up. And then the cat would go all the way to the litter box and do the rest of it. But there was diarrhea that I was cleaning up all the time from the cat. From the kitten. I was like an older kitten by then. And I knew that obviously there was something extremely wrong here. I mean, why would our cat have the same totally bizarre reactions that, that I was having? And like I said, you know, like later, that cat hat was totally deformed after all the things that, the conditions that it was under. And it wasn't because I wasn't buying cat food. And um, it was drinking normal water, it had good cat food. And when it was with, as long as it was with us, it didn't look deformed at all. But I guess after it was removed from being heated up by microwave or MRI technology for such a long time, just as my son and I were heated up for months, when it was then removed from that environment, somehow its bones and skeletal frame healed in a crooked way. Uh, its legs were bent and like bow-legged. The tail was crooked. My grandmother described what, what the cat looked like and I thought that is not the kind of cat that we left behind us when we left. And I knew that it was from technology that it affected the cat in the same way that my son and I were affected, which couldn't as easily be seen. So, about the time that I was being assaulted with that, I was looking up things online about Knights of Columbus, a lot of Catholic connections because I had litigation with them. I looked up stuff about Goodrich, BF Goodrich, which was just really weird because that's the aerospace company that my cousin's new boyfriend was working for. And I was just trying to figure out what was going on. I looked up Dick Whittemore, who he lived next to, who he was around. Um, just anyone and everyone, just whatever public information was available. I kind of, I had a little post-traumatic stress disorder reaction because I thought maybe Britney Spears was being targeted. I felt bad for her because I wondered if she was really kind of having a, having a problem or if something was being triggered against her to be a problem. And I remember I was writing into TMZ around that time or on the website chat thing and had some really hostile reactions from people who seemed like ready to kill me over things that I was defending Britney Spears over. And the other thing that I was doing is for in my spare time when I wasn't feeling bad I was making a lot of rhymes on a on a rap site it wasn't like rap, it was a um, kind of like 8 mile, like where you go in front of a group of people and one person has to make up a rhyme on the spot and make it sound, you know, funny or good. And then the next person says something to rhyme back to them in a response, kind of like debate, but using rap as a, as a rhyme. And you know how in 8 mile there's Eminem and they do this competition and that kind of thing. Well, that's what this was on online. It was a place that you could go and agree to battle, quote unquote, battle with somebody online who would who would um, give you a rhyme, give their rhyme, and then you respond back to it. It's kind of insulting each other back and forth, but in a playful way. And I remember I was coming up with some 
crazy rhymes. I mean, like, some of them are really good. I was kind of like, what in the world got into me? Because I had no idea. I don't think I'm good at it at all now. I think I, so many horrible things have been done to me. I don't feel like I even think in the same way. I mean, I've been um, assaulted with Haldol. I've been, um, been pr pretty much assaulted to lose my mind and my creativity. And, but at that time in my life, I was very creative. So I wasn't just creative, I wrote some really hilarious rhymes in response. I really enjoyed it, it was kind of like, it's kind of like being in debate or giving legal arguments, but with a very creative twist and using humor too. So I thought it was fun. It was a way for me to relax and be creative in a good outlet. And those were the kinds of things that I was doing when, um, right before then I was really being hit really hard with being assaulted. About that time too I started figuring out some of my songs were getting leaked out to somebody, to a few different people who are making them their own songs. And I thought, how are people stealing my songs from me? I mean, I was, I had been singing, doing, singing songs at a cafe in Portland, Oregon where a lot of people would listen to them and I had original song ideas. But I couldn't figure out, I mean, I was really shocked to hear one of my songs, almost verbatim, melody and words, on the radio. I thought that, there was no mistake about it. It was my song. And I started to feel like, who's ripping me off? I mean, like, stealing my intellectual property? Oh, and then people want me to look like I'm crazy. That's right because nobody's stealing from me, right? They've only been stealing my jackets from me, my clothing from me, my medical records, and everything I own, and then my son. But nobody's stealing my creative ideas, of course not. So, on every level, my civil rights and human rights, and my son's human rights, were, being, were completely destroyed. And so I, I was being assaulted with these, th these um, mil military aerospace like um, defense hits, basically. 